Well, today we're going to take a look at the new Yoda Legacy Lightsaber Bundle that came from Galaxy's Edge. Got some questions? I'm going to try to answer all I can next. Stick around. That's right, folks. Disney finally did it. After four years, they finally gave us Yoda. How did they do it, though? How well is this done? I know myself, I'm sure you included, were really concerned about how this lightsaber was going to look compared to others. Because let's face it, Disney has not been good as far as accuracy, size-wise, trying to make it screen accurate, or anything like that. I was curious. I was concerned, like I'm sure a lot of you guys were as well, on how this lightsaber was going to look. Now, you may have seen my live unboxing that I did um, when I picked this up on the 19th, but we're going to go deeper into this. We're going to look more at what's in here and take a look at some other things as well with it. So let's go ahead and jump over to a full screen so you guys can really get a look at this. Now, the box is really nice. Look, let me back up here a little bit. The box is nice. It, it, it is the cardboard style box. So, you know, unfortunately with the fact that the large boxes like this for them doing plastic would be probably a lot more expensive for one, which I mean, heck, we know Disney spends, you know, a crap ton of money on, on you know, things that may or may not work. I mean, Look at the Star Cruiser. I spent all that money on it and it's closing in September. Really? Kind of disappointed. I wanted to go on it. I'm not going to have a chance. So for anybody who has gone on it, congratulations. Uh, I'm kind of jealous, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, anyway, it's got the cardboard box. It does have the directions on the bottom. As you can see, it does come with a stand as well. So let's go ahead and unbox it, open it up, see what everything is inside. So this is what we've got. I know it's kind of in front of my face, but I don't really have a lot of choice with it. Um, and you can see it's packaged nicely. It's got the stand in there, the pieces for the stand, the lightsaber, and then the blade and charging cord are underneath. And this does have a rechargeable battery in it, which I know a lot of people are really upset and concerned about that. But I mean, let's face it. I mean, there's only so much that you can do with these lightsabers. And, you know, we're, we're gonna look at it compared, I'm taking it out here to look at um, the stand and everything. Um, you know, the light, we're gonna compare it to the size of the battery chassis that are inside some of these lightsabers and see, I mean, why they had to go with a rechargeable battery and I think that's part of the reason why it's taken so long to try to figure out how they were gonna do it now to show you here underneath that's where your power cord and your blade is at now this blade is a special blade that they came up with it's smaller it's thinner it's not as long as the other blades that they have and everything so it's it's kind of the same thing as far as the way that they did with the dark saber because the dark saber has its own special blade and I know that that was probably done just because of the fact that people were concerned. How big is this thing gonna be? Is it gonna be really, really chunky? Is it gonna end up looking you know, more like your Skywalker saber as far as size-wise and everything? And, and honestly, they did a good job with it. First things first, let me grab this Skywalker that I've got here and show you a comparison size-wise to the two of them. So, you can see the, the, the Yoda is much smaller as far as size, height wise and everything to any of the Galaxy's Edge. And I mean, this is, this is a Gray Flex, you know, style that they have. And this, I mean, there, there are some sabers out there that are much larger than this one. Um, but I mean, it is smaller. It's not, not that big when you compare it. I mean, let me grab the tape measure here and we'll measure this thing tip to bottom. And I mean, it comes in at seven and a half inches total length, you know, going, going end to end here, we're looking at seven and a half inches. Um, 
from what I've seen, most of the ones that you have from uh, from Corban, from um, you know 89 Sabres or any of the ones out there, and I'm not sure who all sells a Yoda, but the ones that I have seen, size-wise, they're all right at 7 inches long. So this is only a half an inch longer, honestly, compared to those that are considered to be more screen accurate than you know most of your Galaxy's Edge lightsabers. So it is it is not as it's a little longer than than those are. Um, girth wise, it is a little bit larger around from pictures I have seen. Um, I had one one person uh, comment on uh, a post that I put on Facebook that shared a comparison side by side of the the Corbanth version and this version and you can definitely see in the picture you know how much of a difference there is between the two now from research that I've done the actual one and let's face it it was CG'd it's it never was actually made in the movie we didn't see this lightsaber actually real until Luke was holding it you know, stand, sitting in front of, of Grogu and showing him what it looked like and, and giving him the choice to go to Din Djarin or to continue to train with Luke in the ways of the Force and have that lightsaber. So, don't know for sure what size, but research has said that it was actually 5.9 inches long um, as far as total length at that time so honestly I think Galaxy's Edge and Disney did a fairly good job with this because I mean it's small it's it's kind of the size you would expect Yoda to have um, I mean let's face it some of the time when he was dual or battling when we saw him battle Dooku you know he had one hand on it sometimes he did he was having two hands sometimes he was flinging around with one so I mean you're looking at it in my hand it, it's you know if Yoda just held it here and did and single-handed it, you know, his hand would have been, you know, about that big holding it. Uh, so I, I think size-wise, like I said, I think they did a good job. Um, so looking at it here, just to kind of give you an idea, I mean, this is this is your power button here, that and it is a push button. We haven't had very many lightsabers that actually have used the push button feature or push button style activation um, from Galaxy's Edge. Uh, thinking about it, I mean, there you have uh, the new Qui-Gon has a push button. Your Jedi Temple Guard, the original and the one they put into the box set, those have push buttons. Um, I'm trying to think of any of the other ones that, that actually had push button off the top of my head. Um, and I think most of them all have some kind of slide button. I mean, even the Darth Maul had, had a, a, a twisting button. Um, so, you know, what this tells me is, let's face it, all of these ones that, that, and maybe they just figured out how to do it. Let me give them that defense. Maybe they just figured out how to go in and make it push button and work that way. But you really can't say that with the fact that the Jedi Temple Guard uses a push button. So they've had the technology. I wish they would have put that technology into the Leia Saber, for instance. I mean, the, having the Pearl push button on there would have been great, in my opinion. Um, the, the, the Episode 1 Obi-Wan would have been great to have that way. The Palpatine, you know, would have been great to have the activation buttons like the Black Series does. But, of course, they didn't do it. But they start, have started to do that now with this one utilizing that push button style activation for the lightsaber. Now, it is rechargeable underneath here on the back side, push button here, all the way on the back side, you have a slide compartment. And let me let me see if I can get it to focus a little bit for you. Um, get it in close, there you go. So it's a USB-C style charging port. Um, it does come with the charging cable, and this cable is not very long. Um, so I would say that you know, if if you're you want to be able to charge it on you know a normal cable, you can. 
uh, make sure you're using one that's only a, a, a half amp, 0 0.5, to charge it because you do run the risk of damaging the battery. And I know that's one of the biggest concerns people have had with having a rechargeable battery in these lightsabers. This one, the Qui-Gon, the, the um, Emperor Palpatine, you know, lightsabers, having, you know, having a rechargeable battery in it. So make sure you're using the right style charging block so that you don't overcharge or damage the battery by charging it too fast and then making it to where it's gonna need to be replaced quicker than you want. Um, Cause you know, as we know right now, we, we're not sure if these are gonna be able to be replaced. One thing I am considering doing is seeing about a teardown on this to see if we can get to the battery inside. Also, I'm kind of curious how much room's inside there. You know, could we install a profi board or a golden harvest, you know, from a custom lightsaber and make this into a NeoPixel as well? Might be another project down the road that I might work on. Sorry to break into the middle of this video here, but I just commented on whether or not this saber can be disassembled and be able to be upgraded. Also, one of the questions that have been asked is, can the batteries in these lightsabers be replaced? Well, I got something for you. Here is this lightsaber completely disassembled all the way down to the soundboard that's in here with the speaker and yes, the removable rechargeable battery. So you can replace the battery inside this lightsaber if you need to. And I will do a full disassembly video of this lightsaber. Keep an eye out for that. That'll be coming soon. So um, looking at it here, we've got on the end, and I'll tell you what, let's get the Kyber cam out. Let's take a look at this closer on the Kyber cam and just get a better view. All right, so here we are underneath the Kyber cam to take a look at it. And I'm actually going to get this a little bit closer so you can get an even better view. So we have the push button here. Like I said, you got the push button on there. I do have this Allen screw here. It looks like an Allen screw that might be able to give us the ability to go in and take this thing apart and maybe, maybe do an upgrade on it, a conversion. Um, flipping it around here. You, this is your charging port that I was talking about. So there's your charging charging point on there. Um, on the end, ooh, that's close. Let's move this camera up for a second. Um, you've got all that information that's on there. Now, the good thing is they did put it on the very end. Um, you know, to, to, to so it's not an eyesore as far as looking at it. Um, you know, in any other place, they could have put it around the base here or somewhere that would have been more of an eyesore. So having it on the bottom down here on the pummel end, I actually prefer it that way, uh, being that they're gonna have to put it on there versus anywhere else, because it's kind of out of the way. It's not right there in front of your face. Um, you've, it does have a different style. And I know we can't see down in there very well. Let me turn the light on. There we go. So, oops. It's got the normal three prong uh, PCB inside for the connection that's there. Um, I'm wondering when we, if I pull that screw out, if that whole piece is going to come out. Uh, we'll have to check that and see. Um, but that's how it looks as far as the lightsaber itself. Not a a bad looking lightsaber by any means. Actually, <laughs> honestly, when I when my wife and I saw it, we were like, Man, it, it's actually pretty cute the way they've done this. Um, I'm wondering if this cap will unscrew. So far, I've, I've kind of messed with it, and it, it does not seem to unscrew. Um, that's going to be a big deciding factor, of, of course, on any kind of conversions that we can do with that. So um, looking at the blade, just want to kind of show you here. The blade is different than any of the other blades. This one actually has threads on here. So when you load this blade into it, it's going to thread in. It's not going to just be your insert and twist to lock. And it also has a, a typical PCB board style connection on there. I mean, it's not exactly like the ones that you're going to have on 
your NeoPixel style blades, but it's different than your normal Savi's blades that have just the, you know, the holes that those pins go in. But that's what the blade looks like. Now this blade, I saw one person complaining about the size of the blade, saying, oh, it's, it's, it's too large, it's, it, it's, it's larger than it should be. I'm not sure if they're accurate, because they were saying this thing's going to be like 29 inches long. So I'm going to measure, and I'm looking at exposed blade. I'm not looking at the, the cap end of it. I'm looking at the actual exposed blade portion and we're sitting right at 26 inches. The entire blade length, which is what they were saying, is 29, right, well actually just a little bit shy of 29 inches. So from research that I've seen, Yoda's blade was actually between 24 and 26 inches. So this blade is actually more accurate to the length that his blade would have been. So let's go ahead and insert the blade and, and see. There's the connection. So as you as you thread the blade in until it locks, um, you'll get that connection as soon as the blade's PCB board makes connection with the pogo pins that are on the inside. And then you get the activation. It's got a beautiful sound. I love the way this saber sounds. Um, it's actually a little bit more sensitive on Clash than many of the sabers that I've looked at. And I think that a lot of that has to do with the fact that this blade threads in and you don't have that looseness that you get from your typical Sabis or Legacy lightsaber blade because we all know that those wobble. They tend to have that wobble inside of the hilt itself. This is actually very stable. I mean, there's there's little to no movement. I mean, it may move a sixteenth of an inch, if even that. Uh, with it tightened down and locked in place, it just really doesn't move. Um, but total length of this saber with the blade included I know that's that's one of the concerns people have had, the length of the whole thing. I mean, we're looking at just shy of 33 inches. Information I've seen has said that his blade, his whole lightsaber, including blade, was about 34 inches. Um, so 32 to 34 inches. So this is actually fairly accurate to what it would have been from what we saw in the movies and what we've seen um, on screen in, in Book of Boba Fett compared to what people are thinking that it should be. And all that information I got looking at, I mean, it comes right off of StarWars.com. You can find it also on uh, Wikipedia. And a lot of the information is on there that actually talks about the size of his blade. So when I researched it, I checked to see because I was curious. I wanted to have something to compare it to. But... Anyway, that is the Yoda Legacy lightsaber from the bundle. And I'm curious, what are your guys' thoughts on it? Me, I'm excited. I really like the fact that they came out with this lightsaber. Um, I've been waiting on it for years. Honestly, since, since I started really collecting the lightsabers, I wanted a Yoda lightsaber. You know, we've had all these other lightsabers that have come out over the years, but they never came out with that. I mean, you've got the one from Corbanth, I know, but, I mean, come on. Corbanth, I mean, you're looking at, after tax and everything, $600 for that lightsaber. This lightsaber was under $250 in the bundle. Now, granted, it's not Profi. I get that. Can it be upgraded to a Profi? I don't know. We shall see. I'm going to check. May have to go, it could go with a Golden Harvest. Right now, they just came out with a new Profi board. Um, they've got the version 3.9 that came out that is, is for sale. Um, I think I've only seen one store out there in the U.S. or in, in U.S. itself that has that board. Um, but because of that, your 2.2 version that you get in the majority of the lightsabers that are out there now, the price on that one has dropped. You know, those used to be close to a hundred dollars. I've been seeing them for 40, 50 bucks now. You know, so theoretically. 
could upgrade this thing if I can get into it for, you know, $60 for the internal and then whatever I need to do with the blade to make it NeoPixel in the blade. Probably upgrade this whole thing for less than 100 bucks. I'm out what, 350 at that point versus you know what it would cost to buy a core band. So I know the the high end collectors are probably you know s screaming at me right now if they're watching this video for that. But I mean, let's be honest, not everybody can afford that, and not everybody is is at that point where they have to have you know something that's that's that screen accurate and those kind of price tags. That's just me. That's my honest opinion. But anyway, um, the stand that it comes with is actually not bad. It's the same kind of stand that that you get with all of the other lightsabers. And I think just because of the fact that this saber is the way it is, I am going to use this particular stand um, that came with it. I have not gotten any of the new uh, Galaxy's Edge lightsaber stands, but hey, I may end up breaking down and getting one to use with this particular lightsaber if it'll fit. I don't know if it will fit or not, um, so I'm kind of curious upon that if it will. But not a bad design, not a bad display. Um, just got to figure out exactly how I want to position it because that little knob on the back there kind of makes it a little bit difficult to get it to sit exactly the way I want it to. So who knows? I may make a custom one for myself and 3D print it. It'll work. Um, I may just get the one from Galaxy's Edge and use that one instead. Yeah, because that's not going to sit the way I want it to. I can tell that. <laughs> anyway, let me know what your thoughts are. I'm kind of curious of what you think about the lightsaber. What are your, you know, do you like the design? Is it too big? Is it okay? Um, you know, what do you think? I'd be interested to know. Drop me a comment down below and uh, let's talk. So, thanks for joining me. I do appreciate your time. If you haven't, hit that like and subscribe button down in the corner. Check that notification bell, you know, so that way you have all notifications turned on and share the video. I'm just trying to build the channel. You know, share the video to your friends, you know, anybody that you know that, that may be, you know, a Star Wars fan. Love legacy lightsabers and other stuff Star Wars. So, thanks for joining me. I do appreciate y'all. So if you want to see more Legacy Lightsaber review videos, check out that playlist up there in the corner. It's got the information you're looking for. Thanks for joining me, and as always, may the Force be with you.